Welcome to Porchinet. This is Kim with Porchinet. Let's get into Song of Solomon. Um, today is day 153, Song of Solomon, and it's June 6th. So it's the 153rd day, and it's Song of Solomon. Ready? The Song of Songs, the most excellent of them all, which is Solomon's. Let him kiss me with the kisses of his mouth, she cries then realizes that Solomon has arrived and has heard her speech. She turns to him and adds, for your love is better than wine. And she continues, the odor of your ointment is fragrant and your name is like perfume poured out. Therefore, do the maidens love you? Draw me, we will run after you. The king brings me into his apartment. We will be glad and rejoice in you. We will recall when we were favored with your love, more fragrant than wine. The upright are not offended at your choice, but sincerely love you. I am so black, but you are lovely and pleasant, the ladies assured her. O oh, you daughters of Jerusalem, I am dark as the tents of the of Kedar, like the beautiful curtains of Solomon. Please do not look at me, she said, for I am swarthy. I have worked out in the sun, and it has left its mark upon me. And they have made me keeper of the vineyards. Thank you. But my own vineyard I have not kept. Addressing her shepherd, she said, Tell me, O oh you whom my soul loves, where you pasture your flock, where you make it lie down at noon. For why should I, as I think of you, be as a veiled one straying beside the flocks of your companions? If you do not know where your lover is, O oh, you fairest among women, run along, follow the tracks of the flock, and amuse yourselves by pasturing your kids beside the shepherd tents. O oh, my love, he said as he saw her, you remind me of my favorite Mar in the chariot spans of Pharaoh. Your cheeks are comely with ornaments, your neck with strings of jewels. We will make for you chains of ornaments of gold studded with silver. While the king sits at his table, she said, My spink nerd, my absent lover, sends forth this fragrance over me. My beloved shepherd is to me like a scent bag of myrrh that lies in my bosom. My beloved shepherd is to me a cluster of henna flowers in the vineyards of En Gedi, framed for its fragrant shrubs. Behold, you are beautiful, my love. Behold, you are beautiful. You have dove's eyes. She cried, Behold, you are beautiful, my beloved shepherd. Yes, delightful. Our arbor and couch are green and leafy. The beams of our house are cedars, and our rafters and panels are cypresses or pines. And I saw this in my Amplified Bible, says, The question does my spirit crave the divine shepherd even in the presence of the best that the world can offer me? Do I have a constant sense of my shepherd's presence regardless of my surroundings? Do I take time to meet my good shepherd each day, letting him tell me of his love and cheering his heart with my interest in him? Do I realize that my love lifted in praise and song is sweet to him or do I withhold it? This is a question for me as well as you. She said, I am only a small rose, verse, chapter two, or autumn, crocus, of the plain of Sharon, or a humble lily of the valleys that grows in deep and difficult places. But Solomon replied, like the lily, among thorns, so are you, my love, among the daughters. Like an apple tree among the trees of the woods, so is my beloved among the sons. Under the shadow I delight to sit, and his fruit is sweet to my taste. He brought me to his banqueting house, and his banner over me was love. For love waved as a protecting and comforting banner over my head when I was near him. Sustain me with raisins, refresh me with apples, for I am sick with love. I can feel his left hand under my head, and his right hand embraces me. 
He said, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles or by the hinds of the field, which are free to follow their own instincts, that you not try to stir up or awaken my love until it pleases. Vividly she pictured it, the voice of my beloved shepherd. Behold, he comes, leaping upon the mountains, bounding over the hills. My beloved is like a gazelle or a young heart. Behold, he stands behind the wall of our house. He looks in through the window. He glances through the lattice. My beloved speaks and says to me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For behold, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, the time of singing of birds has come, and the voice of the turtle dove is heard in my land. The fig tree puts forth and ripens her green figs. The vines are in blossom and gives birth their fragrance. Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away. So I went with him, and when we were climbing the rocky steps up the hillside, my beloved shepherd said to me, O oh, my dove, while you are here in the seclusion of the clefts in the solid rock, in the sheltered and secret place of the cliff, let me see your face, let me hear your voice, for your voice is sweet and your face is lovely. My heart was touched and I fervently sang to him my desire. Take for me the foxes, the little foxes that spoil the vineyards of our love, for our vineyards are in blossom. She said distinctly, my beloved is mine and I am his. He pastures his flocks among the lilies. Then longingly addresses her about, about, Her absent shepherd, she cries, until the day breaks and the shadows flee away, return hastily, O oh my beloved, and be like a gazelle or a young heart as you cover the mountains which separate us. Chapter three, in the night I dreamed that I sought the one whom I love, she said. I looked for him but could not find him. So I decided to go out into the city, into the streets and the broadways which are so confusing to a country girl, and seek him whom my soul loves. I sought him but could not find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me to whom he said, have you seen whom my love, soul loves? I had gone but a little way past them when I found him whom my soul loves. I held him and would not let him go until I brought him to my father's house, my mother's house, into the chamber of her who conceived me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, by the gazelles, or by the hinds of the field, that you stir up nor awaken love until it pleases. Who or what is this, she asks, that comes gliding out over the wilderness like stately pillars of smoke perfumed with myrrh, frankincense, and all the fragrant powders of the merchant? Someone answered, Behold, it is the traveling litter, the bridal car of Solomon. Sixty mighty men are around it, and of mighty men of Israel. They all handle the sword and are expert in war. Every man has his sword upon his thigh, that fear be not excited in the night. King Solomon made himself a car or a, a palaquin from the cedar wood of Lebanon. He made its posts of silver, its back of gold, its seat of purple, and its inside of it lovingly and intricately wrought in needlework by the daughters of Jerusalem. Go forth, O you daughters of Zion, and gaze upon King Solomon wearing the crown with which his mother Bathsheba crowned him on the day his wedding, on the day of his gladness of heart. And this one, what is my greatest concern, the thing with which most of us all want Christ's help? When he asks to hear my voice, what do I tell him? That's a question. Verse chapter four, how fair you are, my love. How very fair your eyes behind your veil. Remind me of those of a dove. Your hair makes me think of the black wavy fleece of a flock of the Arabian goats, which one sees trailing down Mount Gilead beyond the Jordan on the frontiers of the desert. Your teeth are like a flock of shorn ewes, which have come up from the washing of which all are in pairs, and none is missing among them. 
Your lips are like a thread of scarlet. Your mouth is lovely. Your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate behind your veil. Your neck is like the Tower of David built for an arsenal, wherein hang a thousand bucklers, all of them shields of warrior. Your two beasts are like two fawns, like twins of a gazelle that feed among the lilies until the day breaks and the shadows flee away. I will, in my thoughts, I will get to the mountain of myrrh and the hill of frankincense to him whom my soul adores. He exclaimed, oh my love, how beautiful you are. There is no flaw in you. Come away with me from Lebanon, my promised bride. Come with me from Lebanon. Depart from the top of Amana, from the peak of Sinir and Hermon, from the lion's dens, from the mountains of the leopards. You have ravished my heart and given me courage. My sister, my promised bride, you have ravished my heart and given me courage with one look from your eyes, with one jewel of your necklace. How beautiful is your love, my sister, my promised bride. How much better is your love than wine and the fragrance of your ointments than all spices. Your lips, oh, my promised bride, drop honey as the honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue, and the odor of your garments is like the odor of Lebanon. O oh, garden enclosed and barred is my sister, my promised bride. A spring shut up, a fountain sealed. Your shoots are an orchard of pomegranates or of paradise with precious fruits, henna with spinknerd and plants, spinknerd and saffron, calamus and cinnamon, with all trees of frankincense, myrrh and aloe, with all the chief spices, you are a fountain springing up in a garden, a well of living water and flowing streams from Lebanon. You have called me a garden, she said. Oh, I pray that the cold north wind and the soft wind may blow upon my garden, that its spices may flow out in abundance for you in whom my soul delights. Let my beloved come into his garden and eat its choicest fruits. Do I heed Christ when he bids me to come away from the lion's den of temptation and dwell with him? Am I willing to have the north wind of advers adversity blow upon me? if it will better fit me for Christ's presence and companionship. These are little questions on the bottom. I have come into my garden, my sister, chapter five. I have prom my promised bride. I have gathered my myrrh with my balm and spice. From your sweet words I have gathered the riches, perfumes, and spices, balsam, I've eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with milk. Eat, O oh friends, feast on, O oh revelers of the palace. You can never make my lover disloyal to me. Drink, yes, drink abundantly of love, O oh precious one. For now I know you are mine, irrevocably mine. With his comforting words still thrilling his heart, through the lattice she saw her shepherd turn away and disappear into the night. I went to sleep, but my heart stayed awake. I dreamed that I heard the voice of my beloved as he knocked at the door of my mother's cottage. Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my spotless one, he said, for I am wet with the heavy night dew. My hair is covered with it, but weary from a day in the vineyard, I had already sought my rest. I had put my garment, how could I again? I put off my garment, how could I put it on? I'd washed my feet, how could I again soil them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door and my heart was moved for him. I rose up to open for my beloved and my hands dripped with myrrh and my fingers with liquid, sweet scented myrrh, which he had laughed upon the handles of the bolt. I opened for my beloved, but my beloved had turned away and withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul went forth to him when he spoke, but it failed me, and now he was gone. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen who go about this city found me. They struck me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took my veil and my mantle from me. I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, if you find my beloved, that you tell him that I am sick from love, simply sick to be with him. What is your beloved more than another beloved? O oh, you fairest among women, taunted the ladies. 
What is your beloved more than another beloved that you should give us such a charge? She said, My beloved is fair and ruddy, the chiefest among ten thousand. His head is as priceless as the finest gold. His locks are curly and bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are like doves beside the water brooks, bathed in milk and fitly set. His cheeks are like a bed of spice or balsam, like banks of sweet herbs yielding fragrance. His lips are like bloodied enemies or lilies, anemones or lilies, distilling liquid, sweet-scented myrrh. His hands are like rods of gold set with nails of barrel or topaz. His body is a figure of bright ivory overlaid with veins of sapphire. His legs are like strong and steadly pillars of marble set upon bases of fine gold. His appearance is like Lebanon, excellent, stately, and majestic as the cedars. His voice and speech is exceedingly sweet. He is altogether lovely. The whole of him delights and is precious. This is my beloved and this is my friend, O daughters of Jerusalem. And the question says, in my weariness from earthly cares, do I hesitate to answer when the divine shepherd knocks at my door and so turn from him? These are just questions that help us understand and relate how we can relate to Jesus, how we can go to him and relate to God, our Father, how he needs to be the first and foremost of our thoughts every day and first and foremost thoughts of our, our, our thoughts every night and, and looking to him. And chapter six says, where has your beloved gone? O fairest among women again, the ladies showed their interest in the remarkable person whom the Shulamite had championed with such untinted praise. They too wanted to know him. They insisted, where is your beloved hiding himself? For we would seek him with you. She replied, my beloved has gone down to his garden, to the beds of spice, to feed in the gardens and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's garden, I am my beloved's garden and my beloved is mine. He feeds among the lilies which grow there. He said, you are as beautiful as Tizra, capital of the Northern Kingdom's first king, my love and as commonly as Jerusalem, but you are as terrible as a bat bannered host. Turn away your flashing eyes from me for they have overwhelmed me, overcome me. Your hair is like a flock of goats trailing down from Mount Gilead. Your teeth are like a flock of ewes coming from their washing of which all are pears and not one of them is missing. Your cheeks are like halves of a pomegranate behind your veil. There are 60 queens and 80 concubines and virgins without number. But my love, my undefiled, my dove, my undefiled and perfect one stands alone above them all. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her who bore her. The daughters saw her and called her blessed and happy. Yes, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. The ladies asked, who is this that looks forth like the dawn, fair as the moon, clear and pure as the sun, and terrible as a banyard host? The Shulamite replied, I went down into the nut orchard one day to look at the green plants of the valley to see whether the grapevine had bunded and the pomegranates were in flower. Before I was aware of what was happening, my desire to roam about had brought me into the area of the princes of my people, the king's re, re, retinue. I began to flee, but they be, called to me, return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon you. I replied, what is there for you to see in the poor little Shulamite? And they answered, as upon a dance before two armies, or a dance of Manhanum. Question. Is my Savior unquestioningly the one altogether lovely, the one above all others most precious to me? Can I tell how and why Christ is more to me than any human being or than all earthly possessions? Chapter 7. Then her companions began noticing and commenting on the attractiveness of her person, 
How beautiful are your feet in sandals, O queen maiden. Your rounded limbs are like jeweled chains, the work of a master's hand. Your body is like a round goblet in which no mixed wine is wanting. Your abdomen is like a heap of wheat set about with lilies. Your two breasts are like two fawns, the twins of a gazelle. Your neck is like a tower of ivory, your eyes like the pools of Heshbon by the gate of Beth Rabum. Your nose is like the tower of Lebanon, which looks toward Damascus. Your head crowns you like Mount Carmel and the hair over your head like purple. Then seeing the king watching, the girl is absorbed. Ad admiration, the speaker added, the king is held captive by its tresses. The king came forward saying, how fair and how pleasant you are, O love, with your delight. Your statue is like that of a palm tree and your bosom like its clusters of dates, declared the king. I resolve that I will climb the palm tree I will grasp its branches. Let your breast be like clusters of the grapevine and the scent of your breath like apples and your kisses like the best wine. Then the Shulamai interrupted that goes down smoothly and sweetly for my beloved shepherd kisses gliding over his lips while he sleeps. She proudly said, I am my beloved's and his desire is toward me. She said, come my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us go out early to the vineyards and see whether the vines have budded, whether the grape blossoms have opened and whether the pomegranates are in bloom. There I will give you my love. The mandrakes give forth fragrance and over our doors are all manner of choice fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for you, O oh my beloved. And the last chapter eight says, looking forward to the shepherd's arrival, the eager girl pictures their meeting and says, Oh, that you are like my brother who nursed from my, from the breast of my mother. If I should find you without, I would kiss you. Yes, and none would despise me for it. I would lead you and bring, I would lead you and bring you into the house of my mother, who would instruct me. I would cause you to drink spiced wine and of the juice of my pomegranate. Then musingly she added, Oh, that his left hand were under my head, and that his right hand embraced me. I adjure you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that you never again attempt to stir up or awaken love until it pleases. Who is this who comes up from the wilderness, leaping upon her beloved, leaning upon her beloved? And as they sighted the home of her childhood, the bride said, under the apple tree, I awakened you. There your mother gave you birth. There she was in travail and bore you. Set me like a seal upon your heart, like a seal upon your arm. For love is as strong as death, jealousy is as hard and cruel as Sheol. It's flashes of fire, a venomous flame, the very flame of the Lord. Many waters can't quench love, neither can floods drown it. If a man would offer the goods of his house for love, he would be scorned and despised. Gathered with her family at the wedding guest and, and the wedding guests in her mother's cottage, the bride said to her stepbrothers, When I was a little girl, you said we have a little sister and she has no breast. What shall we do for our sister on the day when she is spoken for in marriage? If she is a wall, discreet and womanly, we will build upon her a turret, a dowry of silver. But if she is a door, bold and flirtatious, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. Well, I am a wall with battlements. My breasts are like t towers of it. Then was I in the king's eyes as one to be respected and to be allowed to find peace. Solomon had a vineyard at Baal Haman. He let out the vineyard to keepers. Every one was to bring him a thousand pieces of silver for its fruit. You, O Solomon, can have your thousand pieces of silver and those who tend the fruit of it, two hundred. But my vineyard, which is mine, with all its radiant joy is before me. O oh, you who dwell in the gardens, your companions, you've been listening to your voice. Now cause me to hear it. Joyfully, the radiant bride turned to him, the one altogether lovely, the chief among 10,000 to her soul. And with unconcealed eagerness to begin her life of sweet companionship with him, she answered, make haste my beloved and come quickly like a gazelle or a young heart. 
and take me to your waiting home upon the mountains of spice. This is such a beautiful allegory that uh, Solomon actually wrote this for the Shulamite that he loved. But this is an allegory between us and our Father God, our Jesus Christ, our Savior, our Lord, our best friend, our master, our beloved. And he is mine. His banner over us is love. That song, I used to sing that song, his banner over us is love. And we, we just want... Lord, I just pray right now before I get off because I know it's gone kind of late. I just pray right now that everybody who's listening to this and reading with me Song of Solomon will turn their hearts and question those questions that I did question that we would recognize where we are with him, where we want to be with him, where we desire to be with him. And Lord, that we would get to that place with you. Like... The Shulamite here, hungry for her mistress, hungry for the one her heart loves, not a mistress, but the one whom her heart loves. Lord God, we want to get there. We want to get there every day. We want to be there. And I thank you, Lord, that you draw us by your spirit, so tender, so precious, that we fall in love with you and our soul hungers and thirsts after you after righteousness, after Jesus, that that relationship will cultivate and develop and we will grow in the things that God has for us, in his relationship with us, in his, the things he wants to show us and do with us, that we will be still and know that you are God and we will recognize and see the ways of the enemy and the ways of righteousness. And we will walk in the way of righteous. We won't fall into the enemy because our focus will be on you and our true heart relationship, our love relationship will be like this. And I thank you also that the one that said that, that his, the sister, that I am the one that the womanly, discreet and womanly, that I'm built up with, with the, I'm built up. And and uh, but that you respected her, you went to her, you loved her, and even though she was flirtatious, and you went to her and showed her the love, and you drew her to you, and because of that, she honored you. Lord, there's so many of us women out there that that, that we get caught up in that, but we we just thank you that you draw us. That's what I saw there in this part that you draw us in because we're a certain way. We can be flirtatious maybe or or just try and we're big. We're, we're, we look our look and talk our talk and act our act. But then when, when you come in, you just love us so much. You pull us in and you say, you are mine. I love you. And, and because of that respect, that honor, that that beautiful relationship grows and your love draws us by your love you your love just draws us and it, it makes us just totally surrender and we want to be there and we just thank you right now for this beautiful song of solomon i pray everybody will rest in that receive that understand it ask the lord to show you deeper into this it's chapter eight chapters eight short chapters but it's so full of it's packed full of god's love for us and the loving kindness of the lord leads us to repentance and we want to repent we want to just come and we want to say lord we receive you if you're a new christian or an old christian it doesn't matter this relationship grows and deepens and it's our yielding to him it's our focus on him like through this these chapters that made the difference so be blessed today and remember your words are your way to victory and i'll see you tomorrow on fortunate